Sean, we have defined 10 ways of people intruding on so, to someone's network. Right. What are ways that we can prevent or at least even detect to prevent yeah. or remediate the yeah. issues? Uh, so, uh, you know, we're going to talk about uh, uh, intrusion detection and prevention systems. Um, usually they're, they're pretty hand in hand, um, but uh, you can't have one without the other. You can have a, a, an intrusion detection system without the prevention side of it. But why have just detection when you can have both? I think the only <coughs> difference would be price. I, obviously, yeah, there's going to be a price difference there, <laughs> but um, <coughs> you know, pay the extra money. Honestly, it's totally worth it. It is detrimental if you only detect it and you don't get to it in time. Mm -hmm. The prevention system basically stops it from happening if it notices it and you've told it to stop it from happening. Yeah. So, um, so the, essentially uh, uh, IDS, IPS, they can be hardware software based, uh, it can be a, a software that runs on a, on, on a server or a host or a piece of equipment or it can be built into your firewall, it can be a separate uh, uh, physical device that sits within your network. Um, there's separate from your firewall. It's separate from your firewall, yeah. yeah. Um, and IDS monitors data across the network for malicious activity, uh, basically. So anytime so it senses right? that I, I, the IDS specifically, the the the, the detection system um, uh, will scan any any traffic that comes through it um, for malicious intent, and then will alert um, whoever you have set up in that piece of software, piece of hardware, uh, right. to to take okay. a look at it, right? Um, uh, uh, while the IPS will prevent the malicious activity by terminating that that connection, that that you know, that piece of malicious the software, software, someone from the outside, yeah. just pretty much any of the yeah. situations, it'll we just talked cut about it off before. essentially, exactly. uh, w which will then prevent them from from continuing any any malicious activity, uh, or hopefully prevent them from. You know, it's not not. Nothing 100%, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so it's all about how you set up these systems, too, because you could have an IDS system in place, but if your IT manager doesn't set it up to prevent or block or alert on certain levels yeah. of things, it can, things can get through. So yep. it's, it's really good to have someone who knows what they're doing when they're configuring these things. Um, it is super important to have them is what it seems like nowadays, yeah. especially with how many ways people can get into your systems. Yeah. So one of the nice things uh, with the, the newer IDS and IPS systems is that uh, you know it'll it'll send alerts to the network admins, um, but it'll typically go through uh, security information and event management, so a, a SIM system, okay, uh, which will help to filter out a lot of the false positives, so that your your network admin isn't getting inundated with alerts of hey there may be a thing that's happening over here because this one packet looks off to me. Yeah, alert. Or, <laughs> or even in the sense of like someone spam emailing you or yeah. DDoSing you in that moment. Yeah. You aren't going to want alerts for everything. You, know? yeah, you, you only you want it for the things that are important. You could literally overload an exchange system by setting it up to alert you on everything and then you get spammed. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you have a million emails in your inbox because someone sent 500,000 petabytes of information at your yeah. system. And it's trying to alert you for all of that, making an email that's even larger than a packet produced on your exchange server. Yeah, yeah. So it could essentially be very detrimental if that's not set up properly from yeah. what it sounds like. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> you, you definitely want to know when things are happening, but you don't need all of the information because no yeah. one's going to be able to filter that information correctly exactly. without having that that so service. So it's like a service? Like, yeah, it's yeah, a service, it's a service yeah. Okay. And sometimes it's managed by a human being, sometimes it's managed by a piece of software that'll go in and trim out what, okay. what seems to be like non-important This has been repetitive. Information. Here's one of the repetitive yeah. things. Drop the rest down. Yeah. Gotcha. Or, hey, th these aren't, you know, I, these have been seen multiple times before and it's they've been marked as non-intrusive right, or right. non-harmful. Non so because we drop these, these. I guess you would probably be the better person to answer that. Are IDSs and IPSs kind of also, uh, I guess, do they have definitions, I guess, that get uploaded into them for? They can be. Um, it depends on the, the type of detection that's built into them. Okay. Um, and which we'll, okay. we'll, we'll get into here in, in, just a, in just a little bit here. I just wanted to hit a couple other things real quick. Sure. Um, uh, that I had in my notes is that um, people will sometimes confuse a firewall and an IDS or think they're the same because a lot of times you'll, you'll get a firewall and it'll have an IDS and IPS built into it uh, but truly they're not the same thing right yeah. so a firewall 
um, typically look outward for intrusion attempts and block things from coming into your network. Okay. Right, but an IDS, and IPS system will look at all directions that information is coming in and out of it. Okay, so firewalls kind of really just trust what's inside your network is okay. Right, yeah, it, but it's not it worried about what's behind it, essentially, yeah. yeah. But it will, uh, it will, it will look outwards and, and you know, kind of like be that, that guard, yeah. right? A Whereas, firewall. yeah, a firewall, <laughs> yeah. Whereas your um, your IDS and IPS is going to be kind of like the, the the guy in the background, just kind of like almost like a secret police kind of thing, right? Where okay. They're, they're, they're undercover. Yeah. yeah. And so um, they'll, they'll they'll see a lot of the the inner workings of your network, and um, obviously it's not all encompassing, right? It'll only know what's going back and forth through it. So depending on where it's installed, uh, so you typically you want to put them in you know strategic areas. Usually for smaller networks or more mm -hmm. simple networks, you usually put it right at the firewall, behind the firewall, or integrated into your firewall. Yeah. And that way, everything that passes through your network has to go through it anyways. Yeah. Um, but uh, in larger networks where there's a lot of inner site communication, it could be helpful to have IDSs and IPSs planted within there as well. That way, in case someone gets yeah. infected, you know, has a machine that's infected that's doing things with you know maliciously within the network. Or you've got your man in the middle attack. Yeah, you've got a man in the middle attack and, and hey, things like it can help detect those kind of things. things. Like, hey, this is changed from whatever yeah. I sent it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, so yeah, so the IDS can be organized by the detection that takes place uh, or how detection is approached. So uh, detection can take place on the network side or on the host side. Um, so a network. Um, Intrusion detection, or NIDs, uh, can be placed within the, the network to help monitor malicious traffic. We, we kind of already went over that. Um, uh, uh, the host's intrusion detection will run on a single host, so either a machine or server uh, piece of equipment, and it will only scan, inbound, scan inbound and outbound traffic from that particular piece of hardware. Uh, typically, you'd run that on a on a server side. Something you want something to protect specifically. Yeah, something you really want to have protected like the and, and locked are down. Machines. We spent three hundred dollars on them, and all right. they do is remote into the server. But yeah. well, we need that remote server to be protected. This is where you would want to put that on there. Uh, so the the different types of uh, detection, right? So you have the signature based, right, which is pattern recognition. Um, it analyzes traffic patterns and known malicious sequences used by malware, and a lot of times that'll be. Uh, you'll, they'll have an updated list of, of different signature types that will you know you'll go and update uh, from time to time, uh, and then so some of the more kind of like antivirus yeah definitions. older older antivirus yeah. definitions yeah, th yeah things like that, um, but now you know nowadays we've got uh, uh, you know machine learning versions of the of, of IDS as well so it'll uh, it'll use that machine learning to compare potentially malicious activity to a model of trustworthy activity right um, therefore. It, it will help to catch um, things that are previously unknown mm -hmm. as malicious attacks, so uh, like day zero attacks. The, those, right. those types of, of uh, uh, detection will not 100% of the time catch those, but it will be able to catch them a lot more often than, than a, a, right. a signature-based uh, system would. So it's like, hey, this guy normally just opens up Outlook. Yeah. Okay, cool. Hey, this guy opened up Outlook and something else happened. Yeah. And it's done it a couple times. This traffic that normally is going through me is acting differently this time. Exactly. Let me compare it and see, okay, well, this is strange. You should look. You should know this. Hey, this is malicious. All right, we're going we're gonna to cut it off. So. Exactly. Uh, Just so y'all know, machines are doing this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty incredible, honestly. Um, but the downside to this is, of course, that <laughs> it, it generates a lot more false positives because it, it doesn't know. It just knows that, hey, this is weird. You should look at it. And then eventually, if you've gotten your system lined up and you've had it in your system. So I, I imagine there's a lot of headaches initially. Hey, this has been blocked. Yeah. And you have to go in there and allow it and then just work your way through. Yeah. Once you have everything for your company or your house that has been used and yeah. it should be being used, yeah. defined, then the one-offs are going to be the, yeah. a lot less often. And you'll see like legitimate things happening rather yeah. than oh, this guy opened up Outlook 30 times. This isn't normal. It's like, <laughs> right. oh, no, it was just crashing, and he tried yeah. so many times. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you can also, you can, you can adjust the settings within your, your notifications, okay. within, within what it's alerting um, to, to kind of help mitigate some of that. But you want to be careful with that, obviously. You want to, if, you're, if you're adjusting those settings, you want to, even if you don't adjust the settings, you want to make sure that occasionally you go in and review the logs, the logs yeah, and sure. see if there's anything that maybe got through that's been going on for quite some time that it, you know, the system thinks it's not an issue, but 
True. It potentially could be. And then so. you notice that it's something that shouldn't be running on your yeah. network. It, you could be the IT administrator that knows every piece of network traffic that goes through, and you'd yeah. be like, that one's not right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the intrusion prevention uh, uses multiple response techniques. Uh, okay. It's very similar to I, uh, the intrusion detection IDS, um, including stopping the attack itself, uh, changing the security environment, meaning it goes in and adjusts the security settings within the firewall automatically where the, the uh, uh, your security device within your network. Okay. Um, or uh, it can even uh, uh, adjust the, uh, the attack's contents to make it non-malicious, essentially. Oh, okay, yeah. interesting. So take out the bad code, take, out the, take yeah. out the script that's in the background of that email and then send it over the email anyways. Mm -hmm. It's like, ah, this is just, you know, cutting off the fat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the intrusion prevention can be split up into multiple different categories. Uh, Network-based intrusion, um, wireless intrusion uh, detection systems, uh, intrusion detection and prevention systems, uh, or network behavior uh, analysts. So um, network behavior analyst is, is different from the, the, the ones we talked about with the uh, Abbreviated, that's NBA. We're not talking yes, about sorry. basketball. Yes, I'm sorry. Network behavior <laughs> analyst, the NBA, right. Um, uh, basically, it monitors traffic for unusual data flows, such as DDoS or certain malwares. So that's well. that's the portion that's really kind of doing a lot of that work in the background, saying, "Hey, is this okay? This is right. like a normal process. Okay, you can go right. on. Oh, this one's kind of fishy. Let me put this yeah. in quarantine or do as." you've told me to do per your configuration. Right. <laughs> uh, as well as host-based. So it can it can be installed on a host uh, or, or a network device just like the, the intrusion detection can. Um, um, but then it also has a, a wireless function as well. You can, you can have a wireless intrusion detection prevention system. Um, very similar. Uh, helps prevent a lot of the man-in-the-middle attacks. Um, okay. So that's uh, where that comes in. Yeah. All right. I was wondering um, if we had something for that specifically. And then the IPSs can also be uh, uh, categorized by detection method as well. So it also has signature-based detection, uh, okay. as well as a uh, uh, statistical anomaly-based or machine learning as well. So very, okay. just exactly the same as the uh, intrusion detection. So f basically what I'm gathering from this is you have your intrusion detection system and you have your intrusion prevention system. Mm -hmm. Intrusion prevention does the exact same thing as intrusion detection, except it actually has the ability to stop To stop happening. it from happening, yes. And alert. So and it's like, and hey, alert, yeah. I stopped this from happening. Yeah. So typically that would be combined together into an IDPS, an intrusion oh, okay. detection so they, they and prevention system. Yeah, they will combine name. that okay. thing together. Some some people will call it I, I, IDS, IPS. Some people will call it IDPS. It really just depends. But it's essentially the same thing. Okay. Um, Makes sense. Uh, but there are obviously there's limitations to it, just like there's everything else. Well, what um, are they? So noise on your network uh, oh. will will throw off the IDS and IPS uh, into thinking that there is malicious content happening when really it's there's nothing there. So by noise, are you talking like whenever a cable's been ran over a, a fluorescent light bulb yeah. or something like that? Yeah, uh, yeah. There, there's a lot of different definitions for noise in the network. So yeah, it's having causes. yeah, it's absolutely really causes to noise yeah. in the network. But yeah, just to define it, you got your wire going next to your microwave. Uh, essentially, microwave, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any 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 kind of static devices. or yeah. noise, yeah, things like that. Um, Interesting. Uh, the the systems do pr um, uh, produce a large f amount of false positives, which can be help be mitigated by by the sims and things like that right, that we discussed right. earlier. But that well, is it's, it's still there. Everything yeah, going through it. Yeah, it, sometimes it, it, it would probably it, take a while. It's a big on task. System, but yeah, definitely. Uh, and it's it's nice to have a, a, a sim service um, that that will handle that kind of stuff for you. So there there. Are Teams of, of people that will handle the going through your sim alerts and, and notifying oh, okay. you of and that of comes with IPS. IDS some, sometimes it can. Sometimes okay. it's a standalone service that will just handle all that for you. It's essentially like a twenty four hour uh, uh, knock situation, oh, okay, uh, or sock situation that will sit there and yeah. and yeah. But you've got to pay for it. Obviously, it's it's. A monthly subscription. Yeah, a monthly subscription to be cost or, or something similar to that. It's not so bad. Yeah. Uh, uh, out of date signatures on the older IPS and IDSs uh, obviously leaves you vulnerable to, to brand new okay. attacks, uh, as well as uh, lag and updating the files. The amount of time it takes for, for uh, your signatures to update from one set of signatures to the other, there's a lot of time in between that new things will come out and, and you'll be you know open and vulnerable. And, um, well, that's while you're updating it, right? Yeah. So, like, you hit that update button, you may potentially get 
intruded yeah. at that moment. Yeah, not only while you're updating it, but, but the, in between the updates, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 because the new definition hasn't been updated. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so that makes um, perfect sense, and that's really unfortunate. Yeah, and as well hackers as... Hackers are quick. Yeah, <laughs> hackers are definitely quick. Um, uh, as well as encrypted packets. Uh, encrypted packets aren't processed by an IPS. Uh, or IDS, because they can't. It be. doesn't have yeah. the decryption code. Uh, so um, it doesn't have that key. It, they got compromised. They can be <laughs> used. Yeah. So exactly in that situation, if a key were to be compromised, you would have a way of of uh, getting encry- encrypted pack packets into your network Bypassing with malicious IPS. information. Yeah. Exactly. Or buy- yeah. It'll I- it, yeah, it'll bypass it essentially it's and get to where it needs to. So, um, but yeah. So that's that's the the majority of the topics for for IDS and IPS. What I think we wanted to discuss today, and really the majority of our of our intrusion types uh, that we wanted to kind of go over and Definitely. just just to to kind of educate you all on on what what's out there and what's going on. Essentially. Possibilities. Yeah. What's going on? How's it, how to prevent it? And uh, yeah. So if y'all have any questions or concerns, Neo Rhino IT Solutions is a wonderful place to call for any kind of consulting or help yeah. desk work, and we would. Love to assist you in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Yeah, you can also uh, uh, leave a comment uh, um, at uh, neorhino.com slash tech tips. You can also leave it in the video below. Um, feel free. We'll, we'll be more than happy to, to try to answer any questions you have. Questions uh, or yeah. comments. You yeah, can comments, add yeah. your own uh, intrusion type, any way that you, any situation you've been in that may be relative to this. Uh, pretty much just whatever y'all want to say. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So uh, with that, uh, thank you all for joining us for another episode of Tech Tips. Uh, I'm Sean Roop. And I'm Chris Tripp. And again, we're with Neo Rhino IT Solutions. Have a good one.